After two grueling weekends here at the Toronto Rock Athletic Center, we're down to only four teams. Our first semifinal matchup in the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League comes your way next. The first of two semifinals here on the JVI Sports Network features the Whitby Warriors and the Brampton Excelsiors. I'm Matthew Carrick alongside Pat Gregoire and our JVI Sports Network crew. Here are your starting goaltenders for this afternoon's game. Arguably the two best goalies after the first two weekends meet. Stephen Orleman for the Brampton Excelsior. You can see there just 38 goals against in his first eight contests. Brett Dobson as well with 34. Both these goalies near about a five goals against average. Both have been tremendous and there's a big reason why these two teams are standing and it's because of the net minders in between the pipes. Take the under here perhaps as if you're a fan of defense, you might see some here today, but two high-powered offenses on either side. Who will win out? It's Brampton and Whitby in our first semifinal here on the JBI Sports Network. Big collision as they fight for this loose ball. Oriole Manderville taking the face off for Brampton. They're on the visitor's bench. They're maroon and gold going left to right as lowering the shoulder. A big hit there from Kyle Waters. Waters still with it now. It popped nearly back to him, but then taken there out of the play. I believe it was Peyton Wallace who now gets it back in transition. Yeah, Kyle Waters, a big addition for this Brampton team. Only playing four games out of the eight possible ones over the first two weeks. So look to see him play a big offensive role for the Excelsiors. Here's Dyson Williams, the leading point getter for Whitby with his first shot in on Steven Orleman, the 99 from the New York Riptide. As Creaser over to the far side, here's John Vesna. He'll put it back for Waters. I believe that's Nate Grennan who looked to return it up top for Ferreira. And as they can't connect, it goes over and back and into the stick of Owen Boyle. For Sean Williams and his Whitby Warriors. Fake and drive through Adam Poitras, who's had a tremendous tournament. As that one rolls into the crease of Orleman. Seth Van Sheppen beats his first man, has a lane to the cage, the shot over top of Dobson. And again, Wallace with another ground ball. It's going to be a beast back there for Whitby today. Yeah, I think everyone talks about this high potent offense of Whitby and, of course, the electric goaltending of Brett Dobson. But this defense for Whitby is so unbelievably underrated. Usually is, especially in junior lacrosse when you got a good defense. As we played two minutes and 15 seconds here in our first period, scheduled for three 15s. As we played the entire way, here's Creaser. Caleb Creaser off a couple of checks, looks off the pass, and it's in behind Dobson for the early lead. 
Believe it or not, that's that's the first shot on goal for Brampton, and you'll see Creaser right by the hand of Dobson. Probably one of the trickier spots you can unload a shot on a goaltender. Looked like Dobson almost got it. Something he's probably going to want want to hold back because he hit holds himself to such a, a high standard. But that's just a perfectly placed shot. Eastrat Hazen. We look at Brennan, we look at Vesna. And how about Caleb Creaser opening the scoring for the Brampton Excelsiors? Here is Penny Strat. You and I, Pat, talked off air before this game. It's all the teams that are the deepest that have almost survived the first two weekends that are here in the Final Four. Absolutely. It's a war of attrition. It's the teams that have those step pieces in case the big name drops off the board due to injury. And both these teams are loaded top to bottom. Here's a screen. The shot comes from around it, and it's Luke Robinson. But Orleman there to meet it, and Creaser nearly had another breakaway. As we've played three minutes and 20 seconds here in our first period. Kobe Hanzer passing off here. Here is ever dangerous Dyson Williams. Now Poitras, his defender fell in front, back for Williams, behind the back. On to the crease for Darren Elliott. And Orleman there to smother that one as well. Anytime Dyson Williams has the ball in his stick, he is an immediate threat for a pass or a shot. And just showing it right there how crafty he is. Vesna will put this one outside. Into the stick of Lucas Ferreira, the cutter and the shot from Hazen will be saved from by Dobson. Anzor again bringing it up the near side. Shots even 3-3. The goal from Caleb Creaser. Only one on the board so far for Brampton. As we've played four minutes and 15 seconds here in our first period. This one bounces away as Williams trying to recover it and it goes over and back. Brampton getting here as well on the heels of really good defending and you got as we talked about off the top, Pat, two young goaltenders. Makes it even easier as Sunderland fires sidearm off the post and in. We'll see right here on the run. Comes a shot. Big pick there by Eastrat. And Sunderland just unloads a beautiful outside shot. 2 nothing Brampton. Nothing really fancy about it, just a sidearm rip that goes off the inside of the post. And finds Mesh for a 2-0 lead here for Brampton. In both of these matchups, pretty much as close to a pick -em as you could get. And you think of some of the teams that went home that had fantastic tournaments as well. Obviously that West Division was an absolute mess with Burlington, Oakville. They battled with their own injuries as Vesna gets hauled down. Nearly a horse collar there from Hanser. Pardon me, that's Wallace who's going to go sit as the extra attacker's on for Brampton. Waters the shot, Dobson, an easy save, and it will indeed be a holding call here against Peyton Wallace. Unfortunate for Peyton Wallace and this defense for the Warriors. Wallace, as you mentioned already, an absolute beast back there for this team. And losing him on the penalty kill is massive. But anytime you get that one hand off the stick, touch the body, especially a big body like John Vesna, the refs are going to call that nine times out of ten. Vesna listed 6 2 260, a draft pick of the Rochester Nighthawks. And he is a 99, so. Him along with a couple other players, hoping they got at least one more game in them. Seth Van Sheppen. Cross there for, excuse me, East Strat before it came onto the crease. For Nate Grennan. On the run, Williams is down and might be hurt. Either that or just disappointed. 
as he was buried by Owen Blount Smith, and that brings the Brampton bench to life. Seth Van Sheppen for Hazen. They return it back up top. Waters is shot off a body in front. Shot clock continues to tick down at 10 now as Van Sheppen for Waters. Back off to his left on the crease. Spinning, firing is Hazen. And that one partially blocked by Adam Cromer. The only NLL commit from this Whitby team and he's a member of the Vancouver Warriors. William Carnduff now. For Brock Haley. What a tournament it's been for Haley. Put him right up there with Poitras in this offense as now Owen Boyle spins back. Penalty kill situation there for Whitby with 33 seconds left on it. I was looking for Dyson Williams, but that's probably why, again, we saw him take that bump, but no one over at the trainer's bench. No, he's back at the front of the line. I saw him, he did take a little breather down, sitting down, but it's gonna take a lot more to keep Dyson <laughs> Williams out of this game. Here's Hazen playing catch with Waters now. Van Sheppen's got top spot. As here's Grennan, back for Waters, and Dobson, it rattled around in the legs there for a little bit. A quick whistle from Brett Cologne. Too early off that Brampton bench, and Josh Hiltz has a substitution call just as the Whitby penalty expires. And that is a huge swing here now or Whitby, you kill that penalty off. Now you get a, a chance here with the extra man. Try to cut this just to a one goal game. It'll be Jordan Majero serving. And like you said, Pat, big early chance here as we near the halfway mark of the first period for the Whitby Warriors. Williams for Haley up top. Brock Haley back for Dyson Williams. No look into the middle, spinning off a check. And the shot from Sean Wesley goes wide. Six in the shot clock as Williams gets it back and promptly fires it right off the knee of Mackenzie Burke, who had no reaction whatsoever. Desperately trying to beat the shot clock was Whitby. It bounded off the end boards and all the way down into attacking territory for Brampton. That's a huge bounce for Brampton instead of having a start down in the other end you start killing this 30 seconds here's Grennan powering his way through he's filled in just as he took the shot as now a little bit extra over there in the crease and a few shoves as well as this ball comes back to center John Wesley halfway through the shot clock just over halfway gone in the power play as well for Luke Robinson. Now Haley, shot comes from Poitras in the middle. Save made by Orleman, but it will be a rebound here for the Warriors. Williams down low. Now Haley, him and Williams playing catch. They switch spots. Dyson Williams, the first real shot we've seen from him as it went just wide and bounces off the end boards again and back out of Brampton territory. Brampton with a chance here to kill the remaining 25 seconds off that. So early on, knock on wood, both penalty kills have done a tremendous job keeping these high-powered offenses at bay. Seth Van Sheppen buried up top, and Carter Schott will go for a high stick here as... The end of the Whitby penalty put a Brampton player in the box. The end of the Brampton player penalty. We're going to have a Whitby player go back. I stick in from shot on Van Sheppen. And so a chance now for Brampton. Couldn't capitalize on their first power play. Neither could Whitby as we sit. 2 nothing. We'll start four on four for just a couple ticks here as Orleman on the bench. He'll take the spot of the extra attacker. 
It'll be Van Scheppen up top. The change with the penalized player happening behind the play as Van Scheppen and Waters up top. Now for Grennan. Cuts through the middle, Vesna. Waters for Hazen. Believe everyone touched it now as they definitely have with Van Scheppen. Hazen, second opportunity. Vesna ate a high stick. As this one picked out of the corner, will go over and back as they were looking for Van Scheppen. And that's just a tremendous save by Dobson. I think he guessed wrong going down to his knees, but at the last second got that shoulder up to make the save. That just shows you the athleticism. Here's Haley over for Poitras quickly. Into the corner for Owen Boyle. Boyle and now Darren Elliott. Just keeping it as far away from this Brampton defense as they can, running that shot clock down as there's a minute and seven seconds left on their penalty. Now Boyle makes his way to the net. Still tried to shovel it almost Ovechkin style in on Orleman, but it rolls through the crease and then too much on the ground. Gives a fresh 30 here to Whitby as we're under five minutes left in our first period. Yeah, Whippy, that's one thing about this team on offense under killing. They like to chew up a lot of the clock, but as it starts to wind down, they got the green light to go ahead and try to make something happen, as we'll see right here. High step for Haley goes to the crease, and the shot there easily off the chest of Orleman. 30 seconds to go. That was real close to eight seconds there. Haley went to hit Hazen and went flying himself as this shot comes in on Dobson. Carndiff trying not to touch it to get the back in call. As here is Dyson Williams. He's still got it as they fake it over to Wesley, but Williams will now pass off to Robinson as he was faking like he still had it. This team runs. Just about as many fakes as I've seen from anyone as that. I'm kind of surprised it's only a possession call, to be quite honest, as Oriole Manderville went hard into Ryan Barnable over in the corner. Robinson for Williams, low shot. Norleman had the five hole covered. It is a semifinal. Officials are going to let him play on here. Here's Majeros. After a hit from Parker Pfeiffer. Brennan. Shot in there through the middle was Lucas Ferreira. As Waters gets tied up with Reed in behind. Meanwhile, Pfeiffer down the floor. And Reed dropped the gloves and his stick in behind the play. And him and Grennan are both going to head off. Scott Reed for Whitby. And Nathan Grennan getting tangled up to the side of the crease, offsetting on sportsmanlike penalties. As not sure how much time we've played five on five here, Pat, but not a lot. Not Pat. a lot. <laughs> not a lot indeed. Some room to work now for. Both of these offenses, it'll start with the Whitby one and their leader, Dyson Williams, tons of room to shoot and hooked it wide. As here's Owen Blount Smith. He's got Caleb Creaser cutting through, elects to go to the trailer, Waters, and the shot saved by Dobson. Here's Blount Smith. We'll slow it down with two and a half left to go here in the first. Seth Van Scheppen to the outside. Vesna, little floater in the middle, and it got caught between a pair of players. As now they go after this loose ball. Van Scheppen, I believe, has it. Van Scheppen then dumped on the crease. And that was late in the clock as well, so it'll give a fresh 30 here to Brampton. And that will drive a coach absolute bananas. You have about four seconds off the clock. Just let your goalie pick up that loose ball. Or just leave it. Van Scheppen with another chance as his pin. He's track. What a recovery from Dobson is the rebound. Shot from Waters. 
That's just Brett Dobson doing Brett Dobson things. <laughs> Been tremendous all season long. Here's Waters the shot. And to get our graphics ready, we did ask who the starting goalie was. Not entirely sure why, but got an absolute 100% it would be Brett Dobson here today, as well as Steven Orleman. I know Orleman had a little bit of relief duty and had some time off, uh, but Dobson has played every single minute for Whippy so far. Diving in through. Official stats only showing an extra three minutes for Dobson. But you're right, that final game against, I believe it was KW, Caleb Slinger coming on. Yep. Much to the delight of the teammates on the bench. Worth noting that Liam Wright is the backup for Whitby here in this game. As there's five in the shot clock, Brennan takes it all the way in himself and will score. How about this individual effort from Nathan Grennan? Face dot here, another one there in tight and just somehow gets that over the shoulder of Dobson, showing why he is pegged to be potentially a first round pick in this year's National Lacrosse League draft. What a goal from the Ottawa born player. There's a discussion over at the timekeeper's box because there was a slashing call wiped out by the goal, so. Dobson and Orleman taking a chance to get a drink of water here. As we remind you, this is the first of two semifinals coming up at 5 p.m. Mimico and St. Catharines. As the winners of these two games will return tomorrow at 8 p.m. Opening ceremonies prior to the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League Championship for the Iroquois Trophy. Here's Liam Steele. Lost that loose ball. So that allows Poitras and the offense back at it again. Dobson remains in the cage with 10 seconds left in the period. Five in the shot clock here. As Wesley over the top, fakes back, takes the shot. There was a rebound, but not far enough for Elliott to pick up. And Orleman will just hang on to put a stop to this first period action back and forth, but only three goals on the board and all of them on the side of leisure of the Brampton Excelsiors. I know we expected some great goaltending and both have been sharp, but Orleman right now getting the better of Whitby and Whitby's got to stay positive. They're getting their chances, not sinking yet. We're going to take a quick break here from the Toronto Rock Athletic Centre. You're watching the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League semifinal here on the JVI Sports Network. Hey guys, this is Paul Dawson for the Rochester Nighthawks. And this is Dan Lomas of the New York Riptide. We've come together to create Back of the Bird, sports stories from the best spot they're told, the back of the plane. We're sitting down with NLLers across the league to chat about Junior A, Senior A, NLL, MLL, everything that goes along with it on the floor, off the floor, and it's presented by Cottage Spring. So give us a listen wherever you listen to your podcast, whether it's Spotify, Apple, and I swear you'll love it. Like and subscribe. Peace. Swipe up. The Lacrosse Flash, showcasing the personality within the game. Stay up to date with all the latest news from around the fastest sport on two feet at lacrosseflash.com and on social.
Ontario Junior Lacrosse League broadcasts on the JVI Sports Network are proudly brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario. Hashtag milk up. Huge supporter for all three weekends. As we get you set for the second period. Brampton three nothing and none of the goals from any of their top offensive producers. Not for a, a, a lack of opportunities for Whippy. They just haven't been those high quality chances, especially against a goaltender you know, like Orleman. You gotta get to the inside. You gotta work hard to get to those dirty areas. That's maybe maybe some of the adjustments that we will see here from the Whippy Warriors and a great loose ball pick up there, but Chris Feltman, a great job to turn that ball over. But it is an eight second shot clock violation. And Dyson Williams will restart. Williams to the far side, ball briefly loose as it's played back for Luke Robinson. That shot hard off the sideboards, the race is on. Again, Whippy just settling for those outside shots. It's just not gonna work against Orland. Gotta get to the inside. Gotta get a moving east-west. Here's Vesna, pick coming from Van Sheppen. Tries to turn it into a pick and roll. They do connect, but nicely covered off there by the defender, but that open space on the near side for Austin Hazen. Like you said, a great pick and roll. Whippy recovers, but it really spreads things out. Gives Austin Hazen enough space to take that shot. Rip it home by Dobson. And it's early. It's a 4-0 lead. But if you're Whippy here, you got to see how you can react after that, giving up that first goal of the period once again. Only a minute gone here in the second. Again, of what is a 15 minute period. So still 29 minutes to play here in our first of two semifinals. Mimico St. Catharines coming up following this game at 5 p.m. Winners will be back tomorrow at 8 p.m. Of course, that's only part of our schedule today. Futures action at seven and nine as we bring back both floors as Orland makes another save. Liam Steele, over center, down to Grennan on the crease. Returns the pass for Kyle Waters. Waters will spin back, takes it himself and scores! It didn't look like that was physically possible, but it gets in the back of the net. And this is the Kyle Waters that the Brampton Excelsiors thought they were picking up when Ooh. they made a trade with Orangeville. A big body, silky mitts, and not afraid to take the net. Another reason why he is gonna hear his name called early in the National Lacrosse League draft in just a few weeks. He is a 99, so final weekend for Kyle Waters. Here's Mandeville off the faceoff, and that hits the shoulder of Dobson and goes wide. Caleb Creaser back after it. He takes two defenders to the turf with him as it rolls back up for Garcia. Seven 99s on this team as Dobson makes a save. Hazen dancing around. Barnable right there. Eastrat trying to take care of him as Hazen takes the shot. And Dobson will make the save. Came out to throw a pick that in the end wasn't needed. Compare that to only four 99s on the side of Whitby as Orleman will cover up. Cromer, one of those, as we said already, has heard his name at a draft. As Ben McDonnell will push this all the way back down the floor. Capacity limits increased for this weekend. 
nearing its roughly 200. As Veltman for Grennan. Tristan Tempers leaving it as it goes over and back. It's a big offensive possession here for Whitby. Another fake that Williams kept. Taking it from Brock Haley. Now Poitras over for Wesley. Back for Poitras in the corner for Williams. Ball just moves everywhere with this Whitby offense. Normally you'd see it go around the horn as Poitras picks up just in time to beat the shot clock as Orleman makes the save, but goes back and forth against the grain. All kinds of passes for that Whitby offense. Trying to work in transition was Brampton and Lucas Ferreira had it go off the tip of his stick. Here's Reed in the corner for Haley. Hard shot from the wrong side for Dyson Williams. Off the glass, and now Haley was cutting to the net. As this will be picked up by Mackenzie Burke. Burke to the outside for Penny Strat. Finds a cutter. It bypasses the cutter. Back to Vesna on the crease. As down floor, too hot to handle for Haley, and he couldn't get the rebound either off the glass. And then Orleman had trouble with it. Just elects to jump all over that ball. I understand Whippy struggling to get some, some quality looks here, but just absolutely forcing the ball right now. Not playing like we saw the first two weekends here. A completely different team. Hazen headed to the net. Part of me wonders, Pat, there are some names on this Brampton bench who were part of that 2017 Minto Cup team. And I know it's not on the line here this year, but big game. Maybe gripping the stick a little tightly over on that Whitby side, a team that hasn't been to that Minto since, I believe, 2012. There's a shot off the foot of Orleman and almost picked up, but not cleanly by Williams. He was going to make that pretty, except forgot to take the ball with him. You make it make a good point about the experience, but you look down the bench with Whippy, guy like Tyson Williams, played in a Final Four game. Ryan Barnable, the captain, played in a Division Three National Championship. These guys have played in big games and big moments. Ball taken away from Brampton there as Garcia's chin strap popped loose. And Orleman again standing his ground, making that save. Another one early in the shot clock from maybe a little too far out. Jordan Majeros facing a double team. He'll go all the way back for Sunderland. Sunderland's pass off the stick there of Parker Pfeiffer. And now they've got movement off the bench. And Sunderland faces man trying to go five hole on Orleman. And he closed it just in time. What a save from Steven Orleman. Yeah, Orleman again. Unbelievable save. Probably the best one we've seen of the night. Sunderland now will lose it for Barnable, and Sunderland has to go back. He just sprinted back down the floor about three times. Did Sunderland, they go right to him and through the crease. Ryan Barnable. Rebound picked up by Brampton, though. Finally, Sunderland heading off as Liam Steele will flip for Vesna. Waters there to set a pick. Eight minutes left here in the second. I think Whippy wants to try to make this a track meet here. Brampton, a team that likes to slow things down, play tough on defense, work the ball around on offense. Brennan from the outside. Dobson will hang on. And his first look was down to that front door, but Mackenzie Burke all the way downfield to take the transition chance away from Sean Wesley. Here's Williams to the crease. Dyson Williams looks like he's starting to wake up here in this game. He's been all over the crease here in the period after some wide shots in the first. And if he does, boy, look out. Nifty play there to bat that ball forward. 
Played down in the de defensive territory as McDonnell tried to find Haley and it was just off the tip of the stick. This is all on Brampton's clock. They're gonna get an eight second count here. And again, hard play by McDonnell. And a smart play by McDonnell. Instead of picking up that loose ball, just box out your man, let that eight seconds chew right off the clock. Headsy play. Initial fake and then shot by Owen Boyle. Starting to see a lot of individual efforts now on the side of Whitby. Right after we praise them for how well they move the ball. As Waters will put outside, six and a half to play. Ben Eastrat with a pick in front. Cross for Van Sheppen lets a hard one go. That's off the end boards. Heads up Josh Hiltz. As Eastrat will just kill the shot clock. Whippy's defense seriously ha has settled in. They're pushing pace. They're starting to play like themselves again. It's now the offense here, the heartbeat of this team. Got to be selective here. No need to rush. Five goals, still six minutes left in the second. Get back to what's been working with you. Boitras may have had a shot. Look at the number of fakes. Right on cue, Ryan Barnable. Talk about the heartbeat of this team. Well, how about the captain getting things started? And it starts with Dyson Williams getting the ball to Barnable. Barnable throws that hard pick, dances through a couple Ooh. of defenders. And if you are going to beat Orleman, you almost have to be perfect. And that was pretty darn close to perfect. <laughs> also making Patrick Diamasis look absolutely silly. One of the leaders for this Whitby team is Dyson Williams. The youngster. We look at our goalies once again. Dobson and Orleman, two of the best young ones. As Orleman protected by the riptide. Mm -hmm. So look at him there. And there's Dyson Williams, 30 points through eight games in this tournament. And pretty even goals and assists as well. We've seen a lot of players with those big points totals getting tons of assists. But... Big tournament for him and Austin Hazen, the captain of Brampton. Uh, Austin Hazen, uh, a budding star in junior lacrosse, wearing the C this year too. So obviously a great player on the floor, but brings a lot of intangibles away from the game as well. I believe Hazen was part of that Minto team. As a youngster, you're correct. I think an AP, was he not? I think you might be right, actually. He probably would be. Yeah, you're right. It probably would have been. And I think Vesna was up as an AP. As well, here's Williams, a low shot. Orleman in that tournament was a trade deadline acquisition from Kitchener-Waterloo as Williams will send it back for Poitras, who cut back and Orleman holding his ground. He wanted a whistle as that cost a couple seconds of the Brampton. Eight seconds to get it over and then they had to rush, which results in a loose ball here for Whitby. Poitras! Back to the crease, and Orleman has a word with the official. But here come the Whitby Warriors. This is a tough turnover by Chris Veltman. Wasn't able to get it over. And then instead, now the offense changing. Veltman gets stuck on an island one-on-one -on -one after being tired. But even just covering Potras, he's so shifty. Gets in and scores. And like you said, here come the Warriors. And it, even though they didn't score that last shift there, they got the look that they wanted to. And that's what this offense needs to do. Get the looks that work. The chances are going to sink. You can feel the shift in momentum. A bit of shift in the weather as well. It's starting to cool off. We hear a lot of thunderstorms outside, but just the reactions of the benches after that one went in as Poitras this time takes the shot that Orleman saves. Off the glass, played back for Riley DeLille. Creaser slams on the brakes. I think if you're Whippy, you can tinder that, that high pressure in the offensive zone. For whatever reason, Brampton really struggling to move the ball up the floor. Very uncharacteristic. Vesna for Hazen as it comes out of the corner. I'm not sure if that hits Reed or off the arm of Dobson, but either way, into the back of the net. And that is a huge response. You talk about the change in momentum. Well, Hazen with a glorious chance there. 
and he is not going to miss very often from right there. A huge goal from the captain to try to regain some of this momentum. 440 left to go and just pumping the brakes a little bit on that Whitby Warrior momentum swing. As they argue over this faceoff, Oriel Mandeville lost control, was taken out into the sideboards, anyways, as it rolls back into the stick of Jake Doolittle. He has help off the bench. Here's Dyson Williams. Likes to take that long shot and the rebound comes right back for Haley, who makes it count. And that's a big goal for Haley. A couple of times we've seen him grip the stick a little bit too hard, but Williams takes the shot and heads up play by Haley just to get there. And that is from deep. A big goal from Haley, who really needed that for his confidence to get going. Now, just a three-goal lead. I was about to comment, Pat, I'd love to be under the cage of Dyson Williams. That one shot there, and you could just kind of see how deflated he was as another one went wide. But then the goal right after to pick him up is Creaser tries to get his second of the game. Four minutes on the clock. Still four minutes on the clock. There, now it goes. As Williams will jog across the restraining line. Big shot from Haley. A little bit of a heat check from Haley there, but obviously this offense has the green light to take those shots when it does arise. Again, another, another, oh, is it a turnover here? It's in the stick of Hazen, and I think we've got a timeout. As Hazen was on his stomach, still cradling, that's all I could see actually was the stick going back and forth out of the bottom of that pile. I was just gonna, and we'll see right here. They clean get, yep, pickup. Yep. Clean pickup, good, good timeout call. I think he called it himself, I looking so at too. the official in the corner. But I, I know that won't count as a turnover, but again, very sloppy play from this Brampton defense. Normally very good getting out of their own end, getting those zone entries, um, but kudos to Whippy. Their forwards are, are staying on, pressuring hard, and those defense, the defensive players jumping out, gaining the pressure, really trying to capitalize on that eight second. Six goals off 18 shots right now for Brampton. Three off 20 for Whitby. As the goalies return to their net. There is junior action ongoing, or sorry, OJLL Futures action ongoing over on the red turf. You'll hear another game at five o'clock. Our coverage of Futures returns at seven and nine following the two semifinals. Hanson for East Strat. Make sure you subscribe to both JVI Sports Network channels as you won't miss a thing. Here's Grennan, his shot. Saved by Dobson. Dobson up looking for Barnable. Now Hanser. As Williams on the run was out of position. And Luke Robinson had to go high. Lost track of his feet, which end up in the crease. And the ball back for Brampton here. Not sure if he wasn't expecting to get the pass, but you think playing with Dyson Williams now for a couple of weeks, you, you always got to <laughs> expect, expect the pass. It. Especially in that play where he was so out of position as Seth Van Sheppen now puts one into the pad of Dobson. Here's Parker Pfeiffer. And Williams. Playing back for Boyle. And the pick and roll on the far side doesn't work. The return pass looking for Robinson again. Now they're under 10 on their shot clock. Robinson way outside. Looking back for Poitras, who goes over the shoulder. They're arguing that and hit Orleman, but a 30 will sound and played back for Brampton. 
Despite his struggles today, I was Dyson Williams ever so dangerous every time he touches the ball as Wallace will bring it back over center. And indeed it is Dyson Williams. Wallace looks him off. I thought for sure that pass was coming. How about the game from Peyton Wallace so far? We don't track cause turnovers, but he's got to have at least three or four. There's a shot from Williams and then Peyton Wallace taking an offensive shift. He will have another year. He's a 0-1 as Eastrat looking for his man on the run. And Ferrero was tripped up. Big collision looking for this loose ball. Doolittle there. There's a Whitby player who's basically sat on the floor as everyone kind of falls over now. Doolittle was there chopping at the pile. And Scott Reed getting out from the bottom. Him and Austin Hazen. Been a big fan of Doolittle's game in these first couple of weeks. Hard nose. Defender from Shelburne, Ontario. Right back for Williams. Big pick there is another outside shot from Williams. Save made by Orleman. Bench screaming for Creaser and he accepts the pass, but now will pass for Waters and head off the floor as Grennan takes over. And John Vesna. Vesna and Doolittle collide hard. Waters over to the far side. Van Shepard. Trying to pass there for Sunderland late in the shot clock. And it ended up on the floor as Barnable picks up. 30 seconds to go. Both teams have both timeouts. As Brampton will corral it and quickly send it up. Perhaps trying to play two, two for one here. Kenzie Burke, DeLille. Now they'll slow things down with Eastrat. 15 on the clock, Orleman's coming to the bench. John Vesna. Waters. Extra attacker out. Van Shep in the shot and Dobson saves. And Hazen a few extra shoves in there on the crease with Adam Cromer, but the Excelsiors continue to hang on to that lead. It's down to 6-3 after two periods. If you're the Warriors, you're pleased the offense is, is starting to go and you still got a period left. Lots of ball. But if you're Brampton, you got to be pleased going into this third period with a three-goal cushion. You can be pleased, but you can't be complacent. Excelsiors lead 6-3 after two here. This is the first semifinal in the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League on the JVI Sports Network from the Toronto Rock Athletic Centre. We'll take a three-minute timeout and be back for the third. Hey, guys. This is Paul Dawson for the Rochester Nighthawks. And this is Dan Lomas of the New York Riptide. We've come together to create Back of the Bird, sports stories from the best spot they're told, the back of the plane. We're sitting down with NLLers across the league to chat about Junior A, Senior A, NLL, MLL, everything that goes along with it on the floor, off the floor, and it's presented by Cottage Springs. So give us a listen wherever you listen to your podcast, whether it's Spotify, Apple, and I swear you'll love it. Like and subscribe. Peace. The Lacrosse Flash, showcasing the personality within the game. Stay up to date with all the latest news from around the fastest sport on two feet at lacrosseflash.com and on social at Lacrosse Flash.
Ontario Junior Lacrosse League broadcasts are brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario. Hashtag milk up. Just waiting for goaltenders to get back in their cage. One quick note as well. I don't think we even mentioned it off the hop, Matt. Dowick not playing in tonight's Ooh. game. He got hurt in that last game. So yeah. Obviously a big loss on that left-hand side shot. One of the top righties for this Whitby's team. Big battle for this face-off as Reed tried to kick it forward. It was eventually swiped back, intended for Jacob Garcia, who now does pick it up. Ooh, that was real close to an eight-second. Vesna and Van Sheppen. He goes around William Carndiff. Over for Hazen, a couple cutters in the middle. And couldn't find Vesna or Ferreira. So Carndiff back. Carndiff the shot. Sails high over top of the net as Creaser beats the first one and then turns back aside. Cutting back to the net, trying to beat another now. Creaser still with it. Looks for Sunderland and then over top of Penn Eastrad as well. Hard shot there, and we're going to get a penalty against Brampton. As Poitras hard into the crease and made contact with Orleman. As Dobson is on the bench. Here's Haley. Low shot. And Owen Blount Smith will make the save. And Penn Eastrat. I think that's the right call there, not to make it a hit from behind and a four minute penalty there, so. Veteran call from veteran official Brett Colomb. Just go with the illegal cross check instead. A reminder that coming up after this game, 5 p.m. is the second semifinal, and then after that, our focus shifts to the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League Futures schedule with four games. There you see them, 7 and 9 p.m. Be sure you subscribe to both JVI channels. I know my partner, a vested interest in at least one of those, including the one that's ongoing over on the other side. <laughs> Still 6-3 here as Mackenzie Burke will run it up. Facing Dyson Williams. Everybody cuts out of the way and suddenly the C's part for Burke. And interference there as the Excelsior on the crease was bowled over by a double team. Bit of an unintentional hidden ball play here in front of the timekeeper's box as both Waters and Grennan Jumped for that ball. Waters has it though. Now for Van Sheppen. Reed there. His stick check enough, enough to knock the ball free. And then Tristan Dempers in the vicinity to pick up the rebound. Mentioned those heart and soul guys for Whitby and Scott Reed certainly right there. Haley, a hidden ball play. He gets it back from Williams. Puts it in the corner for Wesley. Haley and Dyson Williams. They continue to play catches. That shot just sails high over top of the net. Now Sean Wesley down in the corner. Poitras does beat the shot clock. Gets the rebound for a fresh 30. And now just about four seconds difference between the shot clock and the power play time. Quick stick over on the crease for Poitras. And that will reset it again. Adam Poitras. Up for Haley and Williams. All left side so far is now a pick. Williams will take top spot. I mean Haley passing the entire way. There's a shot from Williams off the shoulder of Orleman. And up out of play again. 10 seconds now remaining in the penalty. 
Wesley. Haley. Back for Wesley. Luke Robinson hasn't touched it yet. As now he does as we go back to five on five. Robinson top spot. Wesley cutting back. And I'm not sure if he was trying to get it to Poitras or take a shot himself, but... Loose ball picked up by Chris Veltman. The other New York Riptide player on this Brampton team. Of course, a lot of attention, rightly so, on Steven Orleman, but Chris Veltman in that conversation. Here's Vesna. Vesna to the cutter, Ferreira, his shot just wide. You mentioned uh, Chris Veltman, obviously. The last name ringing familiar, but Chris had himself a, a tremendous junior B career before moving up to Brampton. Was named the OJBLL East Defender of the Year with the West Durham Ironheads finally getting a chance at A ball here, and he's been tremendous. Steele gets hit right at center, bucket goes flying, and all arms remain down. Vesna outside for Van Scheppen. Here's Hazen. Sidearm shot wide of the mark. Hazen goes down and moving screen called over on the far side as then the arm goes high from the trail official. Was there a retaliation afterwards? And that is just going to drive coaches wild. Couple of missed calls in front and, and then you get the retaliation penalty and Obviously, you're frustrated that a call didn't go your way with the officials first, but Matt, as you know, that retaliation penalty, nine times out of ten, it's going to get called. Well, if there's a knock on Vezna's game, this is probably it. The aggression stepping over the line a little bit sometimes, and Whitby well aware as they've got themselves a power play. Halfway through the shot clock already. Haley hits the crossbar as the rebound comes straight back for Robinson. Haley and Robinson. They tried the return and it's over top. As running into it was Poitras. Trying to return for Poitras and Robinson looking at the head of the stick as if it's betrayed him in some way. Two high passes. There to give it back for Brampton. The minute 15 left in the penalty. Sunderland taking the stick of Carndiff with him that time. As then an errant pass picked up by Kobe Hanzer. Carndiff and Ferreira. Ferreira knocked down, Carndiff gets up. And Ferreira and McDonnell have words, but it's gonna be William Carndiff that will go even things up four on four. Yeah, and that's the right call there. You gotta give. And Ben McDonnell thinking that he got called there, but instead it was actually the official making the call there. The quick start, you gotta give space. And that's one of these new rules brought in by the OJLL from the National Lacrosse League. Gotta give space. If not, that's gonna be the delay of game. So four on four we go. On the crease, Drennan! Will score for Brampton, four on four, opening the floor. And too much space for the and, likes of Nathan Grennan. And have a day, Nathan Grennan. Another goal for him, already three assists, five points on the night, proving why he is a top prospect in this upcoming draft. This performance here tonight alone might sneak him right into that first round. He was on the fringe before this game, but you're a National Lacrosse League GM, Matt. Those gamers, you'll take them on your, on your side at any Parker time. Parker Pfeiffer pinballed as he gets up. Holding the chin, now Williams taken down on the crease as Poitras slowing things down. Here's Haley. Wesley there to set the pick. 
back cross crease. What a play over for Poitras. As a bit of a double clutch there for Sean Wesley. Sean Wesley, are you kidding me Ooh. with this feed? Rolls perfectly, a little fake, and just a gorgeous feed from the Ironheads alumnus. Gorgeous stuff from Sean Wesley. Just an absolute cerebral player. And that is a huge goal, huge goal, Matt. You do not want the momentum to continue here with Brampton. It's four on four really opening things up on the floor and starting to tighten it up on the scoreboard. 7-3. It's been roughly three goals all game long, though. Whitby desperately needing to get some momentum of their own. As dropped there looking for the ball was Owen Boyle. And it'll be a fresh 30 here for the Warriors. Boyle up top for Williams. Just flips it to the outside. Darren Elliott in the middle. Williams on the crease. A number of fakes. Where's the ball? In behind Orleman, but not over the line. 51 snake pit tonight. This is unbelievable. The chances that Dyson Williams has had tonight, and the ball is just not sinking for him. The JVI player to watch curse, I think. Strikes again as Seth Van Sheppen over to the far side. Van Sheppen here to the half boards. Grennan. Hazen, Waters as they continue to work the righties. Hazen in front, may have picked off a pass intended there for Eastrat, and then Hazen down. Hazen has not moved as he's holding the face mask. Play continues back this way though, as now Hazen gets up and off to the bench. Barnable's hard shot there, saved by Orleman. Rebound picked up by Garcia, may have touched in the crease, went really unnoticed close. by the officials. Really close there. Owen Blount Smith on the run, Ferreira. He sees defense coming off that bench and slams on the brakes. Seven minutes left in regulation as Ferreira goes to the outside. Off the boards for Vesna, trying a triple team, and that pops the ball free. And I was about to say we'll reset the shot clock, but it does as it's picked up by Parker Pfeiffer and Whitby. Here's Pfeiffer. Chased all the way back to the restraining line by Manderville where he gets a screen. Returning it down low, Pfeiffer looking for the shot and it rolled far. Rolled too far, excuse me. Seth Van Sheppen. High stepping his way over to the restraining line. Now Ferreira. Outside for Eastrat. Excuse me, that was Sunderland as Eastrack comes off the bench. Pick in front from Van Sheppen, low shot there. Ferreira, Dobson with a save as it's double teamed in the corner here in the stick of Van Sheppen. That's Grennan and Van Sheppen fighting for it. And Seth Van Sheppen will corral it, but only 15 on the shot clock. Spinning, firing, Grennan, oh, off the foot of Dobson. That took a hop from here. It looked like in behind Dobson, but stays out. And then too much there from Whitby. And it'll be Brampton possession with 5.40 to go. And Sheppin to the outside for Waters. Diving attempt, draws the penalty and the goal. Carl Waters. This is just unbelievable stuff from Kyle Waters. Second goal of the evening and his second goal couldn't come at a better time to double up their lead. Just about four Whippy Warriors draped all over the big man. He's still able to get that shot off. 8-4 Brampton. Goaltenders take a chance to grab a drink. Dobson went over for a sip as Orleman grabs the water bottle, fist bumps all around to the defensive side 
of that Excelsior bench as we go back to the faceoff dot. And it's big boy time here in the game as Wallace will pick up the loose ball off the faceoff. Plays over for Barnable off the bench. Williams a quick shot. And he shakes his head after that one as it hits the shoulder of Orleman. Mandeville being spied by Poitras. Pushed up by Vesna. Van Scheppen into the corner. Hazen. Hazen, he likes to shoot from there. He likes to pass to Vesna this time, though. And the pass went Aaron as Parker Pfeiffer picks it up in the corner. Dobson looking to the bench to see if he's getting the call. Doesn't look like yet as Wesley, his pass goes Aaron in the stick of Burke. Up for Creaser. Now Wesley. And now they call Brett Dobson. Extra attacker on here for the Whitby Warriors. Needing a goal as Dyson Williams takes it. Hard shot there. This is going to go off the end boards and the race is on. Needing to get there with Brock Haley who does. And quick reset. Dobson, the Nets all over the place and Dobson had it on his hip. Brett Dobson getting back just in time. Unbelievable. He's doing all he can. Time for the offense now. As Dobson on the bench. Williams back to the near side for Sean Wesley. This is just unbelievable stuff from Dyson Williams. A great feed right on the crease. Sean Wesley <laughs> with a gorgeous finish. Couple of great plays from Wesley in this third period. He does not want this season to come to an end. Wesley at 2,000 again. There's, I count, five 2,000, six 2,000s among those 499s is Barnable. Back the other way. Poitras the shot, and Orleman makes the save. Depending on that Junior A ruling, it could be the final game for the 2,000s as well. Liam Steele lit up by Peyton Wallace. Have an afternoon, 14. And credit to Steele, who stays on the floor. He, wow. does, he doesn't look 100%, though, as they go back for Wesley. We'll see if they try and get it down to that corner of the crease. Steele involved in the battle there for the loose ball with Robinson. Steele stays on his set of pick. Get yourself off the floor, young man. Nate Grin and a bouncer into the feet of Waters, though. Under wow. three to play. That was real close to an eight-second clock there. And Whitby was looking for the call. I think they got it just over in that eight seconds, though. Heard a whistle. I was looking for it, but it's over on the other side as the shot clock is about to expire. And Vesna gets taken down in front of that Whitby crease. Vesna, your bench is on the other side. <laughs> Looks like he was chasing a Whitby player who was headed off as here's Williams. Not the time for that. As it's on the crease, Poitras back for Haley. Williams! Orleman was looking for the rebound and blocked there by Majeros, who's on about a foot and a half. Onto the crease and a violation for Poitras. Orleman went down in behind. And that's the gonna play be a is... penalty there. A slashing call against Whitby, I believe. And it is Dyson Williams whose frustrating afternoon continues. With 157 left, so Brampton. Will look to slow things down, kill this penalty and the clock, and punch their ticket to tomorrow afternoon. Hazen, Waters, in the corner, East Strat, Seth Van Scheppen filled in. 
Laid back for Grennan on the crease. Here's Kyle Waters. Hayes in the quick stick. And Dobson the save. Dobson's going to get the call. And will be a five on five offensive set. As Carndiff high steps over the restraining line. He shot there. Save made by Orleman. Minute 20 left. Speed from Caleb Creaser. Got the day started as the cheers are starting to come from the Brampton faithful underneath of us here at the Toronto Rock Athletic Center. Eastrat, the feed from Hazen in the corner will go over and back. Under a minute to play here in regulation time. Warriors need something and they need it fast. And their quarterback sitting in the penalty box right now. Wesley. Oh, Sean Wesley. <laughs> Sean Wesley, have yourself a third period. He doesn't want to go home. Just too much time and space dancing through and feathers that shot right below the glove of Orleman. It might be a situation of a little bit too late. Two goals in 52 seconds, Matt. We've seen crazier things. Oriel Mando. Oh. Pardon me, Oriel Manderville and Zach Sunderland have done admirably well in this tournament at the faceoff dot. And it looked like Sunderland nearly had that one again. And look at the box of the Excelsiors. They understand how important this loose ball is here, as does Peyton Wallace. Once again, we call that name as he's right in and he picks it up in the timeout for Whitby. Wallace has been nothing short of tremendous this game. The bone crunching, rattling hit. He's made a couple of block shots and caused turnovers and then he comes up with the biggest loose ball of the game, calls timeout as well. But as you'll see it right here. 27 seconds it took to get that yes. loose ball and only 30 on the board now even with this timeout as we do want to mention the 99s playing in this game. We'll start with Whitby, Adam Cromer, as we said already with the Vancouver Warriors, Darren Elliott, Ryan Barnable, Keegan White. The 99s definitely playing in their final season of Ontario Junior Lacrosse League action. Penn Eastrat, Oriel Manderville, Chris Veltman, Kyle Waters, Nate Grennan, John Vesna, and Steven Orleman back the other way. So a salute to a fantastic junior career for those players, and we wish them all the best in whatever the future holds. Here's Haley, quick shot there, and Orleman doesn't want to touch it because that'll start the clock. And finally, Haley pokes it in to stop it at 17. Heads up in the crowd. This one sailing high from out of the corner. There from Burke. Whitby pushing in. Wesley, quick stick goal! Only five to play, but we got a one goal game nonetheless. Ryan Barnable. And again, the feed from Wesley. What a third period. <laughs> The St. Bonaventure's product is having. This might be a little bit too late. 5.2 seconds left, Matt. We're in for a wild ride. And it's Sunderland and Pfeiffer again. Most important draw of the game. And Pfeiffer thought he had it. He was off to the races. Here's Wallace the shot. High over top of Oldman. The fist bump in celebration. And the hug there to Chris Feldman. As the Brampton Excelsiors are on their way to the Iroquois Trophy Final. What an unbelievable battle right to the very end. Brampton outlasting that little push near the end but that guy right there Steven Orleman what a game what a season we've seen from him and that's why he's touted as the best young prospect in this game but you look down at the other end Whippy what a season coming to an end and you mentioned those 99s but how about the 2000s oh. as well I mean this is an excellent group 
that hopefully they'll be able to get that season in next year because, as you mentioned, Matt, not getting it done at, at the championship level, but, you know, if they were able to get it done next year, if they do live another day, but if not, if this is the end, it's been an unbelievable ride oh, wow. for this group. They were playing like they didn't want to go home, but, man, Whitby just a little bit too little too late. Second semifinal coming up at 5 p.m. That's in about 39 minutes time. But then after that, we remind you to hang around for futures action. Here on the blue side, we've got Mimico and Peterborough. Whitby and Toronto Beaches. Over on the red side, that's GVI Channel 2 at 7KW in Brampton, followed by St. Catharines and Oakville at 9. Subscribe to our second channel. Subscribe here as well. You'll catch all of those. But stay tuned for our second semifinal if it's anything like the one we just witnessed. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be back in about 38 minutes time here for the Toronto Rock Athletic Center. On behalf of my partner, Pat Gregoire, and our JVI crew, thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you in just over half an hour. <laughs>